Welcome back to Juice's Arthropods. My name is Juice, and today we have an awesome episode, hopefully, about Phylocrania paradoxa or the ghost mantis. A native to Africa mantis that is one of the easiest mantids on the planet to own, take care of, and breed. The ghost mantis is was in my top 10 for 2022. Like these guys are awesome. I have gone on long tirades about how much I cannot stand mantids as far as owning them. And the reason for this is because everybody wants them and they're awful as pets. Like it, ultimately mantids are one of those kind of things. They're like designer dogs, right? Like everybody wants them. They're overly priced and ultimately they'll be long dead before every other regular dog is there. They're just unfortunately not the best pet. And I know several people who do not like that opinion of mine, but I still continue to attempt to breed them. And the reason for that is because you guys like them. And so, and I like them too, don't get me wrong. I love all arthropods, but care for most of these things is awful, except for the ghost mantid. This particular species is user friendly and we're going to go on long tangents about why they have been my top favorite mantis of all times by from looks to ease of care to everything. But we're going to save all of that for a very long dated pros. First, let's get into diet bugs guys they're mantids like it doesn't really they're like oh actually no diet is very important <laughs> it's going, going very well clearly when it comes to diet this particular species loses a lot of points all other mantids on the planet like you get an orchid they're gonna eat anything like absolutely anything with ghosts these are the pickiest damn mantids you will ever own this is honestly only their their only con but they are very picky what this means is they're not really going to go for something unless you give them a reason to which means you have to kind of show them everything a couple times like it takes a couple times to get them undubious the best way to do this is get your ghost mantids young because then they're accumulated to whatever you give them if you get one that's a little bit older and the person's been feeding it only blue bottle spikes guess what? You're going to be stuck feeding this thing thing as a fly. And crickets are typically the thing that people have most available to them, if not dubia roaches. So just keep that in mind when you are purchasing these. You want to get one a little bit younger and you want to be able to try to hand feed it things. They're just, they're not, they're not like orchid mantids where they'll go chase down their prey. They kind of just hang at the top of the cage and they wait for it to come to them. And they're very, very picky. So just keep that in mind with this species. But otherwise you want to have anything you want to give these guys. You can just note do not give them giant hornworms the thing is is that mantids can get uh, impacted very easily so just know that going forward is that if it's larger than the abdomen do not feed it to them when it comes to care uh, a couple things need to be met you need to have a cage that's a minimum three times longer and three times wider than they are you, you height is kind of the biggest requirement there the reason for this and not too high and i'll explain why in a second but the reason for this is because the way that these guys molt is they literally will hang off the top of something and then they will hang off of their molt which means you need to have something for their feetsies to grip onto otherwise they fall and die uh and during their molting process they are very very weak this is the biggest flaw with mantids is that like they have to hang off of the tiny crappy shell of their previous skin it's awful um but just know that you want something that's going to give them both the width because they're going to move around a little bit and the height the height is also allows them to kind of decide the temperature that they want to be this is going to be more uh, relevant in the humidity piece but definitely give them elevation so i would if i was going to say get anything pick taller over wider at the end of the day but for mantids with especially this particular species don't go crazy with it because they're not going to do a lot of moving. They're going to kind of stay in one spot and then sometimes they'll change position. But like they're not explorers, guys. They're just going to like hang there and be like, this is where I found food every time. So this is where I'm going to stay. So when it comes to what you can put them in, sky's the limit. Just make sure it's tall. So let's talk about humidity. For these, they are the best part about them is that with most mantids, if the humidity is off, you can kill them very easy. You know, orchids have very high requirements. Lots of species require very high humidity. With ghosts, what's really dope 
is that they can have everything from 50% humidity up to 80% humidity and they're going to survive most of the time. Don't have it be that high. So I would say keep it more on the 50 to 60 range. But if you mess it up, you're not going to kill them as easily as other species. They are very adaptable with that. And I think a lot of that has to do with the areas of the world they go into because Africa is a huge continent and they're in a lot of the countries within Africa. So their flexibility on humidity ranges is pretty good. You're not going to have a lot of die-off issues with humidity unless you're getting up there where it's basically just like a, you know fog inside their cage you're going to be fine but for overall i would keep about 50 to 60 percent that'll be totally fine but if you decide to breed these guys just keep in mind that you need to have very high heat for them uh when it comes to their ooths same thing with them in general i keep them about 75 so about 75 to 80 degrees they need to be kept in at all times you could probably do hotter than that but in general i just wouldn't when it comes to longevity, they don't live long. Uh, about seven months on the male side, typically maybe nine months on the high end, you're looking at about a year. A lot of arthropods, one to two years is the max. They're really not a long-lived species, which sucks because they're a great species, um, which kind of we'll talk a little bit more about in the cons. When it comes to fecundity, um, I'm going to have to use some alternate words to keep this PG-13 because um, first and foremost, when it comes to actually having an ooth and laying babies, it's about 40 to 50. So not a ton of babies like some can, but if you choose to breed them, there's one thing you need to understand. The um, pairing process takes three hours, like could be longer than that, like three to four hours sometimes maybe an hour maybe two but it wasn't for me it was three and a half hours so if you choose to breed them um either take a lot of caffeine prior or do not do it at 10 p.m on a saturday like i did let's talk about pros okay so pros are they're affordable like they're crazy affordable everybody that breeds mantids uh, well, I should say, when they start breeding mantids in the beginning, they're always breeding these guys because at the end of the day, they're like anywhere between like $15 and like $35. They're very, very affordable. I've seen some go as high as 60 and honestly, that's not a bad deal as long as it's a local pet shop. If you have to pay shipping on top of that, that sucks. So if you're paying any more than say $15 to $60, don't buy them somewhere else cheaper because honestly, these guys are super easy to breed. So that's the first uh, pro is the fact that they're affordable. The second pro is that if you want to get into breeding and especially mantids, this will be the easiest species besides like maybe Carolina mantids and Chinese mantids. So if you want to get something outside of the norm to more of the rarer species, this is super easy and entry level for you. So by all means, which leads to my third point. They are a really good gateway into some of the more exotic mantids at the end of the day because they're very user friendly, but you still get to kind of get that excitement of like, ooh, this is a rare mantid. So like, it's not, but it is at the same time. Uh, another pro, they pretend to die. Like they'll, they'll feign death all the time. And that's hilarious. Like that's their way of dealing with things is to just be like, I'm dead. And they'll pretend to be a leaf. And that's always funny. But it does also have the con, which I won't shove it on the con because it's not that big of a deal. But like, they'll pretend like they're dead, which like kind of sucks when you go in there. And you're like, oh man, it died. And it just springs up and it just like flies or tries to fly. Yeah. It, so as far as that goes, that's adorable. Uh, the next pro, because I forget what number we're on, they look awesome. They have so many crazy head things going on. The males have like a weird like, woo, and then like when they get wings and everything, their head thing gets even crazier. The females got like a cool thing. They're just great. They're just a cool mantis. They look so freaking weird. And the other pro is they come in so many color variations. You've got greens and blacks and browns and any variation of pattern in between. Like they're just all over the place and how they look, which is super cool. Like, and you know, a lot of mantas will just be like green or like whatever singular color. You can get all kinds of craziness. I've got probably five different colors of my own. I'm sure you're gonna see a million things of be real that has them too. Um, the, the males and females are going to be very interesting looking too. They're very sexually dimorphic, which is another pro. So like if you do want to breed them, you can pull up a chart of male and females and it's going to become abundantly clear which one is which. You know, you can count the body segments like some people are doing all the time, but that becomes a little bit more difficult when they're like L3, L4. 
once they get to that mature phase, you're going to know immediately if it's a male or female. And last but not least on the pros list, because it is a lot of them, is that they do not require high humidity, which is the number one killer of mantids. So that's awesome. Like, you really can't screw these guys up. Like, you can, but you probably won't. Honestly, the biggest con with these guys is that they just don't live that long, like maybe like a year, uh, like seven months for males. It, they're just not a long-lived species. I, Queen of the Damned, I think, lived like a year and a quarter. My males typically live about a year. So like I've seen it as low as seven months, but on average, I think you're safe to say a year. But that really kind of sucks because mantids like live a really livid, like a long lifestyle. Like they're just a cool looking species, which is really dope. So like once you have these and they die inevitably, that's kind of sad. Another con for them, if I had to pick one, would be the fact that like when it comes to breeding them, that well, besides the fact that they take forever, they just don't have a lot of babies. Like that's that's good and bad. Like if you're not catching these wild, like you're not getting them wild caught. They're almost exclusively captive bred because they're so easy to breed. But the downside is like if you want to breed them, you're not going to have like the 400 babies that some of them have. You're looking at probably like anywhere between 10 to 50 on average about 40 to 50. So like it just that kind of sucks a little bit. And I would say the only other con for them is that they're mantids and they can't help that. Uh, but mantids as a whole are just kind of a pain in the ass as far as being a creature goes. Um, but that's really it. I mean, otherwise, like if you want a starter mantis, you want something that's affordable, you want it to be cute, you want it to come in different colors, and you kind of don't know what that color pattern is going to be until they're a little bit older, like I think like L2, L3, like this is a great starter species. They're just really cool. But oh, and I'm sorry, one last con, and this is a big one. It's that damn pesky eating thing that sucks like it it sucks so bad when like you get them and all your other mantids are just like you could toss a dubia at their feet and they're catching them and the ghosts just stare at you like you're a moron that is a huge con so picky eaters but other than that that's totally reasonable and honestly overall i would say seven out of ten as far as like an arthropod goes so really good species Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helps you. And and by the way, we've been having this issue lately where we've been trying to figure out like a catchphrase or like a sign off or something in our outro. And uh, it, what I've basically been doing is just awkwardly shouting at people to like hit the bell and to like and subscribe and all that. So please, if you have any ideas for an outro, I don't even care how funny it is. Let me know because otherwise I'm like the awkward kid that stands there with his hands in his pockets and doesn't know what to say at the end of these things. So I would love it and I will shout you out in my video if you get one that I think is really awesome. So please tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. If you've gotten the species before and you liked them, let me know. Let's have a conversation about mantids. And if you want to argue with me on why mantids suck, definitely let's get into that as well. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe and I hope to talk to you real soon.